Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the Lefort 3 fractures. We know the fractures of the middle third of the skull are classified into Lefort 1, Lefort 2 and Lefort 3. Lefort 1 and 2 we already discussed in the previous videos. I have posted the link to those videos in the comment section. Now we are going to discuss about Lefort 3. So this Lefort 3 fractures because the fracture line passes above the level of the zygomatic bone, they are called as suprazygomatic fracture. And because the fracture line is passing in the transverse manner, it is also called as transverse fracture. And because the fracture line is at a higher level in the skull, it is also called as high level fractures. Okay. Here, this kind of fractures are as a result of trauma being inflected over wider area at the level of orbit. The force is usually applied as you can see here from a lateral direction with a severe impact. So what happens is that when the impact is taken by the zygomatic bone over this side as you can see where the trauma is taking place this initial impact will cause depressed fracture at the site of injury now the entire middle third over here will hinge about this fragile ethmoid bone and as the impact will be transmitted to opposite side here we can see laterally displaced zygomatic fracture. So here at the site of impact we have depressed zygomatic fracture and on the opposite side we have laterally displaced zygomatic fracture on the contralate. Before we study the fracture line of this leaf 3 it's important for us to know the anatomy of orbit. So we know the orbit is made up of seven bones. These bones include the maxillary bone which has both the frontal as well as the make the orbital process of the maxilla involved. Second bone is the lacrimal bone and behind the lacrimal bone we have the ethmoid bone. On the roof we have frontal bone. Posterior part is made up of sphenoidal bone and laterally here is the zygomatic bone. Between the maxilla and sphenoid bone here there is a tiny bone present which is known as palatine bone. So these are the seven bones which form the orbit. This foramen we see here is the optic foramen Lateral to it is the superior orbital fissure and this one we are seeing is inferior orbital fissure, right? And over here, this teardrop shaped fissure we are seeing is known as pterygo maxillary fissure which is present between the maxilla and the pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, okay? So these are the structures of importance when we are discussing leaf 4 3 fracture. Let's see the fracture line. So this fracture line will start from the Fronto nasal suture and then it will pass through fronto maxillary suture. It will go posteriorly to pass through the lacrimal bone and ethmoid bone. Within ethmoid bone, it will create comminuted fracture because ethmoid bone is a fragile bone. And now it has reached the optic foramen. Because optic foramen has a dense ring of bone surrounding it, it will not fracture, but the fracture line will be deflected downwards and laterally along the inferior orbital fissure. So it will reach up to here and then it will go down and it will pass through the posterior surface of the maxilla from here and then it will cross the maxilla and it will fracture this pterygoid plate at its base. Now remember in the leaf fort one it was fracturing the pterygoid plate into inferior one third and superior two third. In the leaf fort two it was causing the fracture at the middle part of the pterygoid plate and in the leaf 4 3 it is causing fracture at the base of this pterygoid plate okay this is one of the fracture line of leaf 4 3 another fracture line will start from this point of inferior orbital fissure and from here it will cause fracture of the zygomatic bone and the sphenoidal bone and this fracture line will further pass to cause fracture between the zygomatic bone and the frontal process and this same uh, fracture line from here will again go down and join the previous fracture line which had caused fracture of this pterygoid plate okay so this is how the fracture line will cause fracture of middle third of face and it will cause complete disjunction of the cranial part from the facial part same fracture line will be seen on the opposite side as well so now we know how does the fracture line passes through the skull in cases of the leaf fort 3 fractures. In this cases, if you stabilize the head and grip the teeth, the maxillary teeth, and then you manipulate 
the maxilla for example although maxilla is attached to this whole fracture fragment only but if you manipulate from holding the maxilla what you can feel is a movement of the middle third of the face this mobility will be of a whole skeleton as a single block right other thing is you will see gross edema of the face which is known as ballooning or panda face sizes this will be seen within 24 to 48 hours as the edema will develop we will see as we see in lefo2 also there will be bilateral circumorbital or periorbital ecchymosis along with the edema okay this is known as raccoon size on examining the eyes we will see presence of subconjunctival hemorrhage where the posterior remit will not be seen even if you ask the patient to see medially you will not be able to trace the posterior limit of the hemorrhage now because there is separation at the frontozygomatic suture at this level there will be presence of tenderness over here and because there is separation it will lead to lengthening of the face which will lead to lowering of the ocular level at this point we will also see dish face deformity this we have discussed in lefo2 fractures already and we know because of this fractured fragment this entire middle third which is getting detached from the cranial base because of this this occlusal plane of the maxillary teeth will be tilted downwards and backwards and because it is tilted downwards when the patient tries to close the mouth it will get locked here okay that is known as gagging of occlusion this will lead to presence of anterior open bite okay on examining patient's eyes you will see presence of anophthalmos anophthalmos is the eye globe being pushed posteriorly okay the patient might have double vision that is known as diplopia or the patient might even have impaired vision or temporary blindness on examining the nose you will see presence of flattening widening or deviation of the nasal bridge because here you can see there is although this particular ct scan image is not of lefo3 fracture but you can see here fracture of the ethmoid bone and because there is fracture of the ethmoid bone there will be epistaxis that is bleeding through the nose as well as csf rhinorrhea that is because the ethmoid bone cribriform plate is fractured it will lead to leakage of the csf from the cranial fossa into the nose okay that's all from this video feel free to share with your friends if you have any doubts please post in the comment section all the best thanks for watching the video don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates